Welcome to the Level Up Artist Podcast. We're your hosts, Adriana M.A. and Jackie Sanders. We're two art professionals sharing forward the advice and business lessons we have learned along our creative journeys. We talk to artists, leaders, and art professionals to demystify the creative process and discover new ways to succeed as a career-minded artist. If you find value in these conversations, please go ahead and subscribe. This will help other creatives like you find our podcast and you'll be notified when we drop a new episode every Tuesday. So on today's episode, we're going to dive onto the practical side of your art practice. And we're actually going to be talking about something that almost every artist will talk about at some point or another. And that's about money. In this case, how to save money in your art practice. So whether you're just starting out or maybe you're more of a seasoned creator, uh, we have some tips and insights that hopefully will help you make the most out of your resources. So we're going to go ahead and dive in um, with some of these practical tips. I love this because I'm like, it almost feels like, um, you know, when we have, being that both of us are in public facing studios, we have artists of all career levels coming in and asking questions. And this is one that comes up every once in a while um, about art supply. So uh, first thing we want to discuss is like reviving old supplies you already have. So, you know, that saying one person's uh, trash in this case is another artist trasher. <laughs> um, but there's different things you can do with old and maybe not so old supplies and give them a new lease on life. And the first one that comes to mind to me, hands down, hot tip right off the press is to use Murphy's oil on brushes that are covered with dried paints. So don't give up on those brushes, especially if they're decent quality. If they're if they're not that great of a quality, the, the, no amount of soap or cleaner or conditioner is going to help that brush, right? If it's already past its useful life, there's no reviving that. But good quality brush cr with crusty paint on it, a lot of times um, you can dip it in Murphy's oil soap, leave it overnight, you know, try to break it up a little bit, try to get in there. Um, and it's honestly, it's a game changer. You can pair with other conventional brush conditioners. It's normally what I use. I'll do, um, I believe it's called masters. Um, and I've gotten a lot of mileage out of decent and nicer quality brushes instead of trying to replace them because nicer brushes cheap. Yes. And that's like, I think the key to those, one of those ways that you can save money in your creative practice to your point, Adriana is revitalizing the materials that you already have or looking for materials that other people maybe was trying to get rid of. So secondhand shops can be a great place to look for materials. So things like the Scrap Exchange in Durham, if you're in the North Carolina Triangle area, can really be one of those like gold mines to find canvases, art supplies, paints, um, even shops like Goodwill, uh, Facebook Marketplace, any art supply swaps that may be in your city. They're a great way to get those like, lovingly used as we call it supplies um sometimes even brand new supplies or maybe only used once um for very inexpensive um especially i remember when i was in college they had a program basically at the end of the school year um that essentially was an impromptu exchange of materials so that you brought any materials that you were no longer using other people would bring theirs and then you basically just like a free-for-all take what you want um so that may be a good thing to look into universities or campuses in your area because a lot of the time students will get this long list of supplies that they have to buy for their painting class or their drawing class they use materials for one assignment and then they're like wow now I have this whole color set of gouache and I'm never going to use gouache again because I didn't like using it in my assignment. So they aren't really sure what to do with it. So Facebook Marketplace or Exchange um, Meetups may be a great place to find relatively inexpensive or even free supplies that is still just as good quality as what you would buy full price in the stores. Yeah, and definitely like if it's something where you're looking for something in particular to try, which ties into this a little bit is... If you've been making artist friends, ask them if they can try their supplies. I mean, depending what it is, if it's a $65 tube of paint, maybe not. But a lot of times, you know, it might just be like, can I try this color? Can I try this brand? I just need a little bit. And a lot of times your fellow artists will say, yeah, sure. Give it a try mm -hmm. before you invest in it. So kind of ties in with that. 
Also, recycling, of course, goes without saying, um, but being creative in the way that you do it and how you incorporate it into your art practice. So, for example, you know, could you use some acrylic paint skins that are left over on your palette and somehow incorporate them to create new textures in your work? Um, maybe you have some paper scraps you can use for collage um, or even using reclaimed clay for practice pieces. Like all of this stuff doesn't have to be brand new purchased at the store. I mean, a lot of times there's waste or almost waste generated by our art practices that can be reused for other stuff later mm -hmm. on. So it's just a matter of, you know, keeping an eye out for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know many artists who almost use that as their creative prompt when making work, um, leaning into the concept of reusing materials, giving it new life. Um, and I think especially if finances are tight, leaning into some of those restrictions can be super helpful um, rather than getting down mentally on, I wish I had this new material and I wish I had that new panel um, is thinking, okay, the pro the creative prompt, almost like you were in school, is the limitation that you feel like you're under. Um, and doing using things like um, practice canvases can be super helpful for that too, whether it's one canvas or panel that you paint over and over um, repeatedly or getting some lesser quality materials that you just mentally know, okay, this is not going to be my very expensive showstopper painting, but when I'm doing a study, when I'm doing a sketch, this is the piece that I'm going to use. Um, so you don't need the best quality substrate for something that you know is more of a learning curve type painting. Um, because I think that's a big place in which artists can save money is identifying like which art supplies is worth it to invest in and where you can also afford to cut corners. Um, because realistically, not everything in the art store is a good investment for you <laughs> and your creative practice and where you are. Um, so there may be things that you're actually wasting money on where the more economical alternative will do just as good and save you money to then splurge on what really matters. Um, so avoiding those unnecessary supplies that can often be very enticing when you're standing in the art store. Um, oftentimes we can get that shiny object syndrome of, oh my goodness, I didn't know I wanted to try um, gouache, for example. But now they have this huge set where it's like 50 different colors and the salesperson was very convincing. And now I know I need to try this paint right now, which not saying that you shouldn't listen to that voice, but maybe remove yourself from the store, wait a day or two, and then see if that itch is still kind of there. Um, because as artists, you need to figure out like, is this just tempting me? Or is this actually a supplies that I want to invest in for my creative future? Um, so you can also make it kind of a mental challenge, especially when you're looking online or maybe going shopping in the store, really focusing on those essential supplies that you always have used up until this point and put whatever limitation you want on for yourself, whether, okay, I'm going to allow myself to experiment with two new supplies or three new supplies um, or a supplies under this money amount, right? Um, so set those parameters beforehand to avoid that unnecessary spending of shiny objects when you get in the art store, because we have all definitely felt that or like, I need everything in this aisle right now, and I can't resist. <laughs> I know the way they put all those paint colors, especially in person, all those tubes perfectly lined up in rainbow yeah. order. It's so tempting <laughs> to be like, I want one of this and three of that and, you know, so mm -hmm. on and so forth. But I like that idea of picking up three things to experiment with. Um, I like that a lot of times the local stores will sell things as onesies. So you don't have to buy a set. You can be mm -hmm. like, I want to try this oil pastel and you can literally buy just one of one color right and that's it right. and give it a try or one tube of gouache or one type of fill in the blank whatever so I like that there's that option instead of trying to get you know full-blown set and then realizing you don't even like that medium um but yeah the temptation's definitely strong um another one is palette paper versus freezer paper I mean it might seem silly but if you're a painter um you know, palette paper. I like the green one. It's very cool. But like the normal other types, I'm like, it's not worth it. Actually, I don't even think the gray one's necessarily worth 
the extra money, although it's a nice little treat. But like my take on this is like, why spend on palette paper when freezer paper works just as well? It's mainly what I use. I just tape it to a cafeteria tray and Bob's your uncle. Like I have a big painting palette that goes on and on and on. Other alternatives include wax paper, tracing paper. Some people use thin drop cloth plastic um, also over a cafeteria tray and they'll just paint on that. And a lot of times you can even peel that paint and use it for other stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, these are things you can use time and time again. Another one that comes to mind is you could use a recycled piece of glass. Um, careful if you use this one. I've seen people use it from a frame that maybe got busted, but the glass was still fine. Um, if you do this one, make sure that you try to sand some of those edges a little bit and like maybe duct tape any sharp edges. Um, I've also seen artists that will repurpose old glass cutting boards and they'll actually mm. use that for their paint so that works too and depending what medium you're using of course but that's another one no you don't have to buy the very expensive 85 dollar glass palette because i've seen some nice ones but uh yeah it's a lot of money especially if you drop it whatever breaks you know Ooh. that's true that's true and i think i love that point of taking everyday objects or things that are given an original purpose somewhere else, like a glass cutting board, and then repurposing it for your creative practice can be a great way um, to kind of shift, of course, the purpose of the material, but also save money, um, which one of my college professors told me this years ago, um, and it definitely stuck with me that sometimes the hardware store can be the best kept secret as an artist, because um, you can get things like huge paint brushes or just huge buckets for water. Um, if you're doing murals or a large painting, um, those things that you just need like large quantities of can be a great place. The hardware store can be a great place rather than an art store. Um, of course, if you're using any type of paint, making sure it's the correct application, but you can get decent quality materials for a fraction of the cost. Um, and it may be a better purpose for the project that you're working on. So check out your like or hardware store. I mean, even just walking up and down the aisle saying like, what kind of projects can I create with the pieces here? Or how can I repurpose this screw or this dowel rod in a new way that isn't necessarily traditionally thought of um, can be a good creative practice and exercise too. Yeah, that's some of my now more favorite brushes. It's like if I bought the fine art equivalent, that'd be like upwards of $40 per brush. And at the hardware store, they're less than 15 uh, for a similar size brush. Mm -hmm. Now, this is usually more for like larger applications, like Jackie was saying. A lot of times if it's a smaller one or a smaller size you're working on, you do want the specialized one. It doesn't make sense to use a giant brush for a small detail, but um, a lot of times, yeah, some of the bigger supplies. Um, another one, speaking of art supplies and paint and all that, is mixing paint. So if you have a solid understanding of color theory and mixing basics, it can actually save you from buying every tempting color on the market. And I don't mean just at the art store. It actually applies to the hardware store, too. Instead of buying a quart of every tempting color, which for some projects, that's exactly what you're going to have to do. Don't get me wrong. There's no time to mix all the colors. But um, for a lot of other things, if you know the basics of them and, and you're limited on funds, and especially if you're starting out, um, if you invest in your main mixing colors to get the best quality paint within your budget that you will also freely use and not penny pinch on, um, then it can just lead to a lot of experimentation and a lot of saving time and saving money. Um, an extra bonus bonus, those colors you mix that are related to each other will be harmonized, which is amazing. Even better. They'll all get along. Um, so definitely mixing for some people, color theory, they think of snooze fest. Don't think of it that way. Just think of it more as how can I mix these colors to, you know, mix that tempting, beautiful color I saw at the store, but make it a challenge. Can I mix it myself with what I have? Sometimes the answer is yes, you can. Um, so speaking of, you know, continuing on this saving money on supplies, of course, there's different things you can do to stretch your budget with com without compromising quality. And that's something else. I don't know if you're all getting the gist of this as we talk about it. We're never going to ask you to just like use something that is absolutely terrible quality that then you want to sell. Absolutely not. Like obviously for practicing and things like that. But when it comes to your own personal practice, your own personal brand, you definitely want to go for 
the better quality stuff, right? Again, as much as you can afford it without breaking the bank, right? And one of the hottest tips I learned from another artist, or several artists actually, was that to save paint, one of the easiest ways that you can minimize waste and make the most of it is actually to use airtight containers, uh, specifically deli containers, whether you're recycling them or buying them new and then reusing them over and over again, please. Um, but you can use them to save pre-mixed uh, leftover paint for other projects. So say the paint you are using is a little bit above your budget, right? And you have a lot of extra of that beautiful golden paint. No, we don't get sponsored. Um <laughs> Hey, Golden. Um, but let's say you have some extra from something you painted and pre-mix too much of, then just save it in a container and use it for something else you're mixing later on instead of letting it go to waste. So great way to save money for sure. Yeah. Another way is making your own substrates. So whether it's panels, whether it's wrapped canvases, really doing the math to see, okay, would I save money to stretch my own canvas or make my own wood panel? Um, also, do I have those necessary, the necessary tools, skill sets, um, and the desire to develop those tools, those skills, um, because that's obviously an element of it too. Um, but thinking, okay, if I were to buy maybe in bulk this standard sized canvas that I paint on all of the time, looking at the price per canvas if you were to buy it, or then if you had to buy each of the materials individually, the amount of time it would take you, could you save some money? And is that worth it for you to do that work on your own upfront? Also thinking ahead, in terms of those standard sizes of substrates, thinking more on that buying in quantity standpoint, um, do the pre-made canvases or panels that I use go on sale often? Um, sometimes, especially if you've been an artist for a little while, you kind of have your go-to stores that you shop at, you know, okay, well, every July, maybe they do a large mid-year 4th of July sale. Um, so you can kind of know when their big sale times are and really stock up on materials. Um, because if you want to make can or if you want to make paintings three months from now, you're going to have to buy the canvas anyway. So you might as well buy it upfront at a cheaper price point. But again, this is where the caveat of if you know the set sizes that you already use, use regularly um, and investing when it makes sense, not necessarily impulse buying something just because it's a good deal and then <laughs> figuring out oh man now I have to make like 50 six inch paintings because I bought all these panels <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah and it also depends too like if you're working like you brought up a good point if you're using standard sizing but there's also folks that do not use standard sizing and they have to make their own so then you have to look into investing um, you know, for stretcher uh, pliers and things like that to build your mm -hmm. own. So good for that, right? Um, another one is uh, DIY or repurposed art tools, which kind of ties in with a little bit from earlier. But um, there's some artists that will craft their own brushes. There's actually some cool videos on YouTube that you can look up using branches and uh, textiles and all kinds of cool stuff um, and other various art stools. Uh, there's other artists that will raid their kitchen cabinet or garage for maybe older tools that maybe for their original intended purpose. I mean, they're basically garbage at this point, but they are perfectly fine, you know, for their art practice so think of old spatulas think of funnels like if you're mixing paint and moving things around these are things that can be easily repurposed in an art studio and also quick word of caution goes without saying most of you are adults but just in case um the general rule is if it leaves the kitchen and goes into the studio it never goes back <laughs> the moment it has paint and things like that just in case just in case safety first but um with that next up we're going to be talking about uh balancing quality and budget but first let's put in a quick word from our sponsors this episode is brought to you by our level up artist courses we understand that life as a modern artist can be both exciting and overwhelming plus there's a lot of information out there so what do visual artists actually need we've spent countless hours of trial and error weeding through tons of information to find the gold so you don't have to waste your time going down those endless rabbit holes. In addition to weekly calls, we have created video course modules to cover everything from artist documents to exhibition prep, social media to technology, sales strategies, artist mindset, 
PDF resources, templates, and so much more. Ready to get started? Head on over to leveluppartists.com to learn more, get immediate access, and level up your career today. Welcome back, everybody. So finding that balance between quality and budget for your art practice can be an art form in itself, honestly. Um, So we wanted to pack a couple of questions that we think about when looking at our materials and our budget to evaluate which things are worth it to rely more on your budget for versus splurging on and get that quality that you want. Um, So I think the first thing to think about is really investing in those key supplies that you use all of the time. Um, So thinking about where artists should consider investing in high quality supplies to enhance their work. If you know that you're using a base color, let's say in your acrylic painting, then if it's going to be on the foundation level of your painting, you might not have to use the highest quality paint. Of course, you want to be quality enough but so that it um, is durable over time. But if you want this like beautiful metallic color on the surface of your painting, you don't necessarily need to put that on the first layer when you're probably not going to see it later on. That's a great point. Yeah, I, I learned this from a few other artists. They were like, Liquitex Basics works great on the background levels. Nobody's going to see it anyways, or the mm-hmm. gesso or things like that. Like you said, it needs to be durable. Please don't use the dollar store stuff. Unprofessional work. Thank you. A uh, little PSA. Um, <laughs> but for top layers, yeah, that's that's where you use the good stuff. But also community resources. Are there community resources or collaborative spaces that artists can tap into for shared supplies? Like we mentioned earlier briefly, you know, not just places where you can buy it secondhand, but also like you know, maybe ask around. Um, I know in our area, there's several uh, groups that meet up. uh, You can probably find them on meetup.com, actually. Um, But there's several groups in our area that meet up that are about specific disciplines. Um, So there's textile groups, there's painting groups, there's plein air groups, there's photography groups, you know, so on and so forth. That could also be a great place to, you know, get together with other folks doing the same discipline as you and then ask about supplies. Again, don't be shy about asking. The worst they can say is no. But and if it's something, again, expensive, that might be a little different. But a lot of times and you're like, I want to try this, um, you know, this brush or I would like to try that paint. What's the consistency like? Things like that. You know, most artists will say, yeah, sure, like just try it or buy it off me or here's a sample size, you know, whatever. But um, definitely lean in on your community um, and see how maybe you can do a swap or, or or something like that. Yeah, and I think those are really the situations where you can learn firsthand um, and through their experiences when quality over quantity does pay off. So thinking about when does the quality over quantity contribute to your long-term savings? I think especially primarily, um, of course, as a painter myself, um, where there are paints where, okay, Yes, this is less expensive, but I'm going to end up using twice the amount because maybe the pigment isn't as vibrant or um, it's just not as rich of a paint. So you end up using twice, maybe even three times the amount of actual paint versus if you just leveled up in what the paint quality was, you actually use more, use less in your final painting. So thinking about paint coverage, the pigment strength, um, even for substrates too, are you, maybe if you buy less expensive panels or canvases, you may have to repair them for long-term durability, further support them with a frame versus if you buy a high quality panel up front, It may exist without a frame and which is less cost long term. So figuring out what are those variables for you and your creative practice to where prioritizing quality actually will save you money long term. Yep. And then another question we all need to ask, of course, since we're all on the same giant island called Earth. Um, what ways can you adopt sustainable practice that not only save money, but also contribute to a healthier planet, right? Like an easy one that comes to mind, you know, when it comes to clay, you can reclaim clay. A lot of times you can use your leftover clay from throwing your leftover clay from, um, hand building and just reconstitute it. If it has dried out, it 
basically last for almost forever. Uh, it's just dirt at the end of the day, right? But like you can reconstitute it and use it on other stuff, right? Even if it's just for practice. Or for example, in the case of um, your paints, like maybe instead of uh, having like what, like that paint go into the drain and then go you know, back into the water system, things like that. It's like, are there other ways you can do it? Can you use a trap? Like I have a sink trap in mind that gets a lot of that extra paint. Um, also like wiping your brushes of excess paint before you put them under the water in a sink so that that, you know, leftover paint again goes into a landfill as opposed to going into the water system. Um, things of that nature. Um, there's also eco paints. Uh, you can look those up. There's water, uh, plant based acrylics. Technically, they're not acrylics at that point. I believe they have a slightly different name. Um, or some people do their own oils. They do their own uh, watercolors as well with all natural pigments and natural mediums with it. So there's different ways in which you can do this. Um, obviously, depending on how you work in your practice. It's not always going to work out to try to have an eco alternative to it, but there's definitely different ways um, that you can incorporate this. You know, maybe use a, a rag that you use over and over again of an old t-shirt that you're going to throw away anyways, instead of using fresh new paper towels, right? Does the same thing, right? So again, just, just try to think of different ways. Uh, that is definitely, you know, another way to save money, but to wrap it up, right? Um, just think of like art, depending again what kind of mediums you work in you know it can be something that people are like oh is that a luxury or i feel guilty it's so expensive and things like that but honestly it doesn't have to break the bank um obviously if your art form maybe is fine jewelry with uh fine metals that might be a different story um but most visual artist mediums there's ways to save money you know try to be resourceful creative and strategic and you can make the most out of your artistic journey without draining your wallet um, but yeah, we'll leave you with that. We hope these tips uh, can help you on your path to creating a beautiful artwork that doesn't, you know, wreck your budget, of course. But with that, we're going to wrap today's conversation and we hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, our blog will be linked in today's show notes where you can find episode notes and links to all of our other podcast episodes. And if you want to stay connected with us in between episodes, share your feedback, or have a question you would like for us to answer on the podcast, you can reach us through social media. I'm at May Art across all platforms. And I'm at J Sanders Studio across all platforms. And if you want to follow the podcast, we are at Level Up Artists on Instagram. You can also level up, uh, visit levelupartist.com to get immediate access to templates, resources, and course modules to level up your creative career today. Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you next week.